and get to know. And we'll be broadcasting this on YouTube tonight. Uh, but I'm going to mute the line and get us started for our fourth night of this Holy Week Revival series. First with Reverend Sean James, uh, second with Dr. Marshall Woodard, third with Reverend Barbara Moore. And tonight from the People's Baptist Church uh, is Pastor Eric Good, uh, who is no stranger to us. We've had him uh, on the prayer line a number of times. I, I love preachers that don't mind preaching to the computer screen because they know that the, the Lord is at work uh, using these things uh, to bless people. Uh, wherever they may be in their homes, at the work, uh, sometimes on the road, they, they, they're tuning in. Uh, but I thank God for Pastor Good. Uh, Pastor Good, if you can go ahead and, and give us your screen and unmute your microphone. Uh, and they're having service tonight. They have a Monday Thursday service. And he's, he's sneaking in right here uh, and getting started with us. Uh, and after he's, he's finished with us, he's going to go on over into his own uh, Monday Thursday service. Uh, so I thank God that he's taking the time to come and share the word of the Lord with us tonight. Uh, Pastor Eric Good. God be praised. Thank you so much, Dr. Flores, for this opportunity to share with you this great group of people tonight for uh, Monday Thursday. We're certainly grateful uh, and privileged to be here on this evening. Uh, certainly, I want to draw your attention to a passage of scripture that is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. And I want to read verses 21. 22 and 23. These words are recorded. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goes as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves, which of them it was who would do this thing. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. For the next few moments, I wanna lift up as a, a thought this evening, thank God for Judas. Thank God for Judas. Here we come tonight in this setting of, our, of this text. Uh, Jesus gathers with his disciples to celebrate what is commonly called in the Jewish tradition, Passover. Uh, Passover is a time where the children of Israel gather together to celebrate the passing of the death angel over the land of Goshen uh, during the time of that last plague, killing the firstborn of the Egyptians, but sparing the firstborn of the Israelites, those who had the blood applied to their doorposts. But it's in this particular setting, it's in this particular moment that Jesus provides for us a new meaning for this celebration. And he takes some sacred symbols. He takes bread and he takes cup. And in him taking the bread and the cup, he says, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup is my blood poured out for you. He says that I will no longer drink this cup of the vine anymore until that day I drink it new with you in the kingdom of God. Let me pause parenthetically and just talk to you about the fact that uh, we are missing this type of language, this redemptive language in our churches. We talk a lot about our blessing plans. We talk about getting a miracle. But very seldomly do we focus our attention and celebrate the fact that we have redemption through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, knowing that we were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold from our vain conversations, but with the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Yes, brothers and sisters, there's something amazing, there's something beautiful today we can celebrate as we come to around the table, virtually, whether virtually or rather in person, we celebrate the fact that we have been saved, saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime, life now is sweet and our joy is complete because we are saved. Isn't that a wonderful truth today? What a wonderful truth to note that we are saved. But this takes, takes some very interesting shift. Jesus says that the hand of my betrayer is on the table. Interesting. He doesn't name Judas. He doesn't call him explicitly by name, but he says his, my, my betrayer, the one who will 
go against me <clears throat> is on the table. We have often talked and focused our sermons around Judas, and we talk about the negative implications of him selling out on Jesus. But I would like to suggest tonight that there are some positive, there is a, a blessing to having a Judas in our life, because I would like to submit all of us will find ourselves betrayed. All of us will find ourselves, whether it's from those who are closest to us, or whether, whether it's in the church, whether it's family, all of us will experience betrayal at some point or another. Listen, as long as you live, listen, everybody that you connect with is not a sincere individual. Look at this, Jesus had 12 disciples and one was not authentic. So, so it would raise the question, well, Reverend, tonight, what is the benefit, what is the blessing of having a Judas. Why should I be thankful for my Judas? Why, why should I be thankful for people who betray me? Why should I be thankful for those who scandalize me? Why should I be thankful for people who abuse me? Why should I be thankful for people who hurt me? There's one thing I wanna share with you tonight and I wanna offer this as a point of reflection, there's one reason why we should be thankful for our Judas, because we can be thankful because our Judas, they push us toward our purpose. Mm. Our Judases can push us toward our purpose. Jesus says, the son of man goes at it as it has been determined, at it as it has been divinely ordained. Now, who would who could guess that the divine orchestration of God would include hurt? Most times you and I, when we talk about Lord order my steps, we think that God is gonna lead us into plush meadows. Everything is gonna go our, everything's gonna go in the direction of favor for us. But even Jesus understood that sometimes God's divine direction takes us in places of hurt, in places of pain. And sometimes it's the people that hurt us that are actually really helping us. Now, does this mean that Judas was, yes, does this mean that Judas was, um, does this mean that he did not have consequences? Absolutely not. I would like to submit that even though, even though he was a tool used in the divine scheme of things, he still faced divine retribution. But I would like to suggest to you, as we prepare to come to this conclusion, brothers and sisters, that listen, what does that teach us? First of all, it teaches us to embrace the plan of God no matter what. Listen, Jesus chose to embrace the plan and purposes of God. But the other thing it teaches us, the final thing it teaches us is this. Listen, do not treat people like they treat you. Notice what Jesus did. Jesus, Jesus, took the time, and he still served Judas. In our text, he, he, he still served communion to Judas. And the other thing, he washed Judas' feet. The greatest test of the authenticity of your faith is can you treat people better than they've treated you, understanding that they're being used in the very divine purposes of God. So tonight, as I come to the conclusion, may we come to the reflect, understand, and may we embrace that truth that God will use our Judases to push us toward our purpose. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Good. God bless you. Uh, the Lord has spoken through, us, through you tonight to us uh, this marvelous word. Uh, about Judas, about how God is at work pushing us uh, to our purpose. Hallelujah. We praise God. Uh, so then all the tests we go through, all the trials we go through, uh, God is still at work. I'm going to
invite all of you to uh, partake in, in Holy Communion with me here on the prayer line. Uh, those of you uh, who can go ahead and get elements tonight, uh, if you can get a cracker or a piece of bread or a cup of juice, uh, whatever the elements might be for you at your home, uh, every home has a, a different way of going about it. Every house of God, every church uh, offers some different things. Uh, and uh, there is no one way to do it. In the early church in the first century in the book of Acts, uh, the commandment was to, to do it as often as you eat uh, to remember uh, the body and blood of the Lord. And so whatever they were eating, they remembered the blood, the body and blood of the Lord. Uh, and they would celebrate this, this memorial to the Lord every evening when they ate. Uh, so I encourage you to go ahead and find the elements. Uh, I've got a, a cracker here that I'm going to be using uh, and a cup of juice. And I invite you to uh, get the elements ready yourself, uh, bring them over so that we can partake uh, together here on the prayer line. What a blessing uh, that God has given to us that uh, from our various locations all over the area uh, and maybe even all over the state, maybe even out of the state, uh, God is allowing us to partake in communion and remember uh, this commandment that Jesus gave uh, to his disciples to wash each other's feet. What a marvelous night it was, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 12, recording so much of it uh, for us. Uh, Luke 22 as well, uh, 21 as well, uh, recording it, much of it. Uh, but God has been good to us uh, to allow us uh, to record those things and to come together on the prayer line and partake uh, together at the table of the Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, let us go then to uh, the scripture. Uh, I'm going to be uh, reading what we've usually read from 1 Corinthians uh, in uh, chapter 11 and invite you to uh, just partake in communion with me here this evening. Amen. Let us pray over the elements. Father, we've come to the table of the Lord tonight. Uh, many of us are in front of computer screens or in front of telephones, but we are at the table of the Lord, and we want to remember uh, the means by which uh, Jesus Christ purchased our salvation. Uh, we love you tonight, Lord, for what you've done for us, and we're not taking it lightly. Uh, we stop and pause right now as we uh, have the elements before us and remember uh, the suffering that you endured and how it was that you purchased our salvation. Uh, we're praying tonight, Lord, for all of us. Uh, if we've got uh, sin in our hearts, Lord, allow us now to be forgiven. Uh, we, we let go, Lord, old grudges. We let go of old ways. And Lord, we ask that you would cleanse us uh, and prepare our hearts, Lord, as we come to the table of the Lord. Uh, bless, Lord, this table uh, for the purpose that you have set it. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth that I received a commandment that I pass on to you, that on the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take it and eat it. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread. Amen. In the same manner, after he finished with the supper, he took the cup. When he had blessed it, he gave it to the disciples and said to them, this is my blood, my blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sins. Take it and drink all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the cup. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when they had finished partaking of that supper with the Lord, that they departed from that place singing a hymn. Uh, why don't you sing with me uh, as you can? In fact, let's just try to do it. We don't have the musical accompaniment, but let's just sing the old song that Dr. J loves to lead us in. I know it was the blood. I know it no, was the blood. I know, I know it, it was, was the blood for me. One day when, when I, I was lost, lost he died on the cross. I know oh, it boy, was why the blood for me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, 12 noon is our seven last words in person and on live stream. Uh, so at the sanctuary, if you can be there with us, 12 noon uh, for the seven last words. We're, we'll be on the prayer line in the morning at 8 a.m. as well. So meet us there to start the day off uh, for Good Friday. And then Good Friday night, 7 o'clock p.m., we will be at Reverend John James Church, uh, Salt and Light in Southwest Philadelphia. Praise team's going to be with me. I'll be ministering one of the words, and we're looking for a powerful time in the Lord, uh, that service on tomorrow night. So join us sometime tomorrow uh, to be with us for uh, Good Friday. God bless you all. God bless everyone. Have a blessed evening. Yes, God bless Sister Alice. Thank you so much. Sister Mary Deacon, I miss you. <laughs> Everybody have a blessed night. Yes, you too. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night, night everybody. Good night. Everyone. Amen. Good night. <laughs>